Hello, my name is Scott Pingle and I am the principal bass of the San Francisco Symphony. And this is my instrument, the double bass. The double bass is the largest of the string instruments in the orchestra and therefore makes the lowest and the deepest sounds. We call it the double bass because historically it was used to double the part played on the cello and also because it is almost double its size. It's also known by other names such as the bass, the bass fiddle, the contrabass, the upright bass, or even the doghouse. Yeah, I think a dog could live in here. <laughs> we create sound on a string instrument like the bass by first making the string vibrate. And in the orchestra, we mostly do that with the bow. And this is a bow. The main parts of the bow are the stick, the frog, and the hair. The stick is made with a special wood from Brazil called Pernambuco. And the frog is where we hold the bow. Some bass bows are held overhanded like this, and some are held underhanded like this. The frog gets its name not from a croaking little amphibian, but rather from its resemblance to the V-shaped black pad near the heel of a horse's hoof. And speaking of horses, the hair comes from the tail of a horse. But don't worry, getting it does not hurt the horse at all. It's just like getting a little haircut. We swipe the hair with a sticky substance called rosin. In order to help the hair grip the string and make it vibrate as we use the bow in many different ways. We can make long sustained sounds like this. Or short bouncy sounds like this. Which is called spiccato. Or we can make scary sounds like this. Which is called ponticello. And many, many other kinds of sounds. However, sometimes we don't even use the hair at all. And instead, we hit the string with the stick of the bow. And this is called polegno. We also make the string vibrate by plucking with the fingers, known as pizzicato. All the vibrations we make in the string transfer through this, which is called the bridge. You can see it looks kind of like a bridge. And then those vibrations go through the bridge into the body of the instrument, which then resonates the sound out through the F holes, out into the room. Kind of like a giant speaker connected to your iPad. The body of this beautiful instrument was made in Venice, Italy over 200 years ago. And it consists of different kinds of wood that are glued together. The top of this instrument is made with pine and the back and the ribs are made with willow. This is the tailpiece. It's made of ebony wood and it serves as a kind of anchor for the strings. And the fingerboard, also made of ebony, is where I play different notes with my left hand by changing the vibrating length of the string. Listen to how the sound changes as I make the string shorter. As the string gets shorter, the pitch goes higher. Also notice that the strings are different thicknesses. Listen to how the pitch goes lower as the strings get thicker. The strings on the bass are G, D, A, and the lowest is E. This up here is called the scroll. It's called the scroll because it looks like a rolled up piece of paper. Although I think the one on this base looks a little bit more like a cinnamon roll. And attached to this scroll is what's called an extension. The extension makes the E string, the lowest string, longer and therefore makes the pitch go lower. So I play the E and then I open this and we get a C. Creating a foundation of rich, resonant sound is one of the best parts of playing the bass. Though there are many different ways we can use this wonderful instrument. Here's a part of a piece by a composer named Camille Saint-Saëns, 
that uses the big rumbling sounds of the bass to portray a particular animal. See if you can guess which one it is. If you guessed the Eurasian pygmy shrew, well, you're a little bit off. But if you guessed the elephant, you would be right. We can also use the bass to play beautiful melodies, such as this one by one of my favorite composers named Franz Schubert. <laughs> Also use the bass to play high and fast, such as in this piece by Giovanni Bottasini. One of the many things I like about the bass is that it plays an important role in many different kinds of music. In jazz, we use the bass to create what are called walking bass lines. They sound kind of like this. also do this, which is called slap. There are so many different things we can do with double bass, because it is a very versatile instrument. In fact, it has even been known to occasionally show up in heavy metal music. I hope you've enjoyed getting to know a little bit about this instrument, the double bass, and next time you're at the symphony, please come by and say hello.